Back in 2017, I built a pop can solar heater for the porch of my off-grid cabin. I built it because first I'd heard about this free heat and second because I needed to keep my batteries warm and they were all in the porch at that time. The cost of building that pop can solar heater was about $250 to $300 back in early 2017. Today that would run about $600 and I'm going to tell you whether it's worth it to build one of those and how mine has fared and I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you the truth folks. So here we go. First of all, what's a pop can solar heater? Well, a pop can solar heater is a type of heater that you build using some sort of aluminum cans or downspouts from a gutter system or something like that. You put them in a box that you've built that's all insulated and painted black and everything. You put Lexan on the top of it and with a hole in the bottom and a hole in the top, it gets radiant heat, meaning that when the sun hits it, convection pushes the warm air that's created by those black pop cans out the top exit and sucks in cold air from the bottom. Now, does it work? Well, actually, it did work. I saw temperatures as high as 199 degrees Fahrenheit at the top of my pop can solar heater with it sitting at about a 45 degree angle aimed toward the sun and about six feet away from the porch that I had it heating. I couldn't put it on the wall of the porch because I had a roofed deck in front of the porch. So I had to put it right out on the deck and I first had it at a 45 degree angle. And while that worked actually quite well, it would build up ice and snow because there was no roof over it. So I had to take it and stand it straight up and down, which also actually still worked very well. I did have some problems with it though, and I'm gonna discuss those. But first, I'll do a quick rundown of how you build a pop can solar here. First thing you need is about 300 pop cans. I used, I think, 289 total but you're gonna destroy some when you try to drill them out or punch holes in them or whatever it is you choose to do. So having extra is a good idea. And while we didn't drink a lot of pop, there's always friends that do. And so you can get pop cans pretty much from everybody around you for free. So they're not gonna cost you anything. But you have to build a box to put them in. And the way I built my box is I used half inch OSB for the back of the box and one by six pine to make the actual box that it sits in. I then took 1x4 pine and mounted that to the inside of the 1x6 so that my half inch OSB would sit against that 1x4 and I could glue it and screw it into that. On the front, that also left me a recess for my Lexan to fit into so I could seal it up really well. Now once you build that box, the next thing you've got to do is you've got to insulate the box. And I used 1 inch foam board insulation and I made a mistake here that you don't want to make. And that is I did not make sure that I was using poli -sci foam, which can take temperatures of 500 degrees plus. I just used the regular one inch foam you could get at the big box stores. And you're gonna find out later that that was a mistake. <laughs> Once you've got this box built and you're going to insulate it, there is a couple things you do have to do first. And that is you need to make two headers, one for the bottom and one for the top. And those headers are just one by four pine that you're gonna drill holes in for each of your can tubes that the cans could fit in at the bottom and then have a second header for the top that the cans would also fit in. What this does is it seals off the center of the box so that no heat is rising through the box itself. It can only rise through the cans, which is what you want. Once you have your cans fixed into those headers and you've braced the headers so that you don't cave in on your fall down, then you can insulate the box with your one inch poli -sci foam. And I insulated the back as well as the sides. That just helps keep all that heat in. Now I also use high temp silicone all in the corners of the box before I put my insulation in. And then you should probably use aluminum tape to cover those corners all the way around the box. You want to keep the box well insulated, but you don't need more than one inch foam. One inch foam works fine. Just be sure to use poli -sci foam because you want that high temp foam. And again, you'll find out why here shortly. Once you've got your box built, insulated, all ready to go, you put your tubes in. Now you don't want to fix the top header until all of your tubes are laid into the bottom header and glued into it as well. And make sure that those are well sealed because you don't want any air to travel anywhere but through the cans. Once all those cans are in there, and you will need a little bit of bracing in the middle of the cans because they tend to want to flex a little bit when it's laying flat, then you can mount your top header onto the cans and glue them in as well and fix that into the box. Then you'll insulate above and below. 
And you also want to paint everything with high temperature flat black paint. And the last thing you want to do, other than drill some holes in it, now I used four inch holes, but I would recommend you use six inch holes, not four inch. I think that was a mistake on my part. But you'll put your six inch holes, one at the bottom and one at the top. And the only other thing you need is a snap switch if you want to use some kind of fan to help suck that hot air out of that heater when it's really, really hot. And I used an 85 to 110 degree snap switch. That little switch will then kick a circuit at 110 degrees, which can then turn on a fan to draw more air through the heater. And it will shut off at 85 degrees because now your heater's cooling down and you don't want to really make it cool, right? Okay, so I built a pop can solar heater. Did it work? <laughs> oh yeah, it worked pretty well, folks. In fact, my initial testing with just the heater sitting on a dolly and a brace out in my driveway at 32 degrees Fahrenheit showed 152 degrees within 10 minutes at the top of the can. So they do work and they work quite well, but there can be some issues with them. And I'm gonna talk about that here and explain why I need to rebuild mine as well. Because of convection, when the sun hits the heater, it warms up all the cans and that hot air is going to rise out the top of the heater. Well, this works very well. The only problem is, is that at night, hot air inside of whatever you're trying to warm can rise up through that exhaust outlet of your heater and go back down the heater and cool down and then come in the bottom in the reverse. So essentially almost acting like nighttime air conditioning. And you don't really want that. So one of the things I did to try and solve that problem is I put a baffle just before the inlet of the heater. And that baffle would stay closed until my fan, I had a bilge fan up top, would turn on and start to draw air through the heater. It would open up the baffle and air would flow through. And then at night, or when the fan shut off, the baffle would close and no air could travel through it. Problem with that, folks, is twofold. One, the baffle I chose had springs in it and the springs were too tight. Those springs would not open through general convection. It had to have a fan or something drawing air through the heater in order for it to open up. And my fan motor burned out and stopped. And that was a real issue that I wasn't aware of because I wasn't there. I have a feeling that that heater hit over 500 degrees at the top of that heater because the air couldn't move and wouldn't heat up the porch. This was an issue because it got so hot that it literally vaporized the insulation that I had in the box at about the top two thirds of the box. So you gotta use high temp poli sci insulation when doing this because if you don't, you could run into a problem like I just did. So what did I do? Well, I removed that baffle and for a while I didn't even have a fan running. And believe it or not, I would go out to the cabin and if it was a sunny day and only 20 degrees outside, it'd be 50 to 70 degrees inside my porch. It worked that well. But there was a couple other things that I could have done and something I did do. I experimented with all kinds of different fans and baffles and all kinds of things and I never found a baffle that worked very well for me. But I did find that if I just put a 90 millimeter fan at the exhaust so that it would come on when the unit hit 110 degrees, that definitely helped draw more air through. Another problem I had is that I used high temp silicone to put the first few tubes of cans together and it failed when the box got that hot. And actually, if you look at the heater today, you can see that there are cans that are askew in there because the tubes are coming apart where the silicone was. But the fuse it never did that, it held well. Now the other thing you can do is for your exhaust, you can use a dryer type vent that will close and that should prevent that reverse flow at night. The reason I wasn't able to do that is because I have my exhaust facing downward in my porch and so it would never close. Is it worth it? Absolutely is worth it. But let's talk about the cost for a minute because a lot of people advertise these as free heat. Well, they're not really free. In today's costs, it would run about $600 to build one of these. And I will drop down below everything I use to build mine so that you can look at the cost of doing it. But I gotta tell you, at $600, you're about halfway to the cost of the EG4 mini split that you can buy that's a 9,000 BTU mini split, which does both heat and air conditioning. And I actually do plan on getting one of those in the future because I think it's a great option. But you can certainly build one of these pop can solar heaters for only about $600, which is quite a bit cheaper. 
but they're only going to work when the sun hits them. But they do work, folks. I'm actually pretty happy with mine. I do have to bring it home and completely rebuild it because it vaporized all of that insulation. So I'm gonna to have to tear it apart, re-insulate it with better insulation, get better Lexan glass to put on the front, rebuild some of the tubes and put it all back together. But I do intend to do that because I think it's worth it. So there you have it, folks. I hope that helps you out. If it did, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button down below. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, and I appreciate it if you do. And thanks to all my members. Thank you so much for being here and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Meanwhile, folks, I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.